as we're going through today's stuff, I just want to share with you that um, this is totally going to be like a, a play session. And then what, what we get from here, think about how you could use this just for you personally. And then also think about how could you share this with your students, because ultimately we want their best successes. So uh, I have a other thing I'd like to start with today. So. We won't watch this whole thing, but um, yes, yes, I'm I'm on it. <laughs> so okay, I'm gonna play the topper. Uh, I I flipped my high school classroom so the kids would get their. Um, lesson at home on YouTube or wherever, and then they'd come to school and they'd work. Whether it was like a football game or a school dance or something, like nobody did the thing. So I thought, well, we'll just all watch it in class. I'll make sure they're getting the correct notes and all that. So I started it up, and it was a margarita commercial. That we could not get around. Uh, and, it, and it went on. It might as well have lasted 15 minutes. For, uh, <laughs> so, so we're just going to watch a couple minutes of this just so you can see how, how the sketch note unfolds. Don't be intimidated by what you see here. This is a professional artist doing a thing, and they speed it up and slow it down as needed. But um, just to give you sort of an idea of how this can, can look. Every country on Earth at the moment is reforming public education. There are two reasons for it. The first one is economic. People are trying to work out how do we educate our children to take their place in the economies of the 21st century? How do we do that? Given that we can't anticipate what the economy, economy will look like at the end of next week, week. As, as the, the recent, recent turmoil, turmoil is going to How do we do that? that? The second, second though is cultural. cultural. Every, Every country on Earth, on Earth is trying to figure out how do we educate our children so they have a sense of cultural identity and so that we can pass on the cultural genes of our communities while being part of the process of globalization. How do you square that circle? The problem is they're trying to meet the future by doing what they did in the past. And on the way, they're alienating millions of kids who don't see any purpose in going to school. When we went to school, we were kept there with a story, which is if you worked hard and did well and got a college degree, you would have a job. Our kids don't believe that. And they're right not to, by the way. You're better having the degree than not. It's not a guarantee anymore. And particularly not if the route to it marginalizes most of the things that you think are important about yourself. Some people say we have to raise hands as if this is a breakthrough. You know, like, really, yes, like, we should. Why would you lower them? You know, it's a thing. I haven't come across an argument that persuades you of lowering them. But raising them, of course we should raise them. The problem is that the current system of education was designed and conceived and structured for a different age. It was conceived in the intellectual culture of the Enlightenment and in the economic circumstances of the Industrial Revolution. Before the middle of the 19th century, there were no systems of public education. Not really. I mean, you can get educated by Jesuits, you know, if you have the money. But public education, paid for from taxation, compulsory to everybody and free at the point of delivery, that was a revolutionary idea. And many people objected to it. They said it's not possible. So we'll just leave it here. Uh, I love Ken Robinson. This is a really good talk. So if you have a few minutes, you should definitely check it out. But um, basically, this is sort of what a very professional-looking sketch note uh, looks like. Okay, and it's quite intimidating to look at. That when I watch this, I'm like, there is. This is like a Monet compared to what I can do. Um, but that's okay because we are going to. Get her done. In our own ways, with our own styles, with our own looks. And to prove it to you, I'll just share that I have absolutely zero artistic ability. None. Not a zilch. Uh, my stick figures barely look like stick figures. But I'm fascinated by, the, by this idea of the sketch note. Because also, when taking notes in my classes as an undergrad and a graduate student, um, my, my like Roman numeral cap, capital one, you know, section heading and, and they, they just slanted all over the page there was it was never pretty anyway which drove me nuts so uh, with my very limited artistic skill and just a little bit of practice and I, I'm not kidding just a little bit of practice 
uh, I put this thing together. And um, I think it looks halfway decent because you can tell that that's a person talking. And you can tell that's a soccer goal. And you can tell that guy has a question. And look, that's an arrow. So um, so it, it, it just took a little bit of practice to do this. And I sat down and, and just started messing around with it. And I challenged Katie and Patricia. I said, hey, you should do this too. And and let's just see how it works. And I also asked Paul. Like, Paul's like, ah. So, um, <laughs> so, so anyway, so, so this is what happened. So as we're going through today, you will be you. You don't have to be anybody else in any of this. It's like we tell our students that all the time. And so put together these things. Practice these things while we're talking. I'm going to show you a couple things uh, to think about as we're doing this. I am not an art professor. I'm sure there's like a fancy pants way to do some of this stuff. I don't know it. Um, but as, as we're working, just feel free to color and, and draw and doodle. And that's what you have a field notebook for and, and the cool pen to do. So thank you for coming to sketch notes and, uh, and concept mapping. Cause you can do the same thing through both of these. Uh, we've got several events coming up this fall. So please don't hesitate to enroll for any of those. Pressing pause is coming up next week, one week from today, actually. Uh, and we're going to increase student learning through lecture breaks. Maybe they could sketch note it. Um, also coming up is uh, the fifth annual faculty scholarship forum. And the deadline for that is September 20th. So if you have questions to that, uh, talk with Paul. And if you need to, um, if you want to make sure that you, if you need the link to RSVP for anything, email Katie. Is there anything else? To, and we have a Halloween party coming. Can we call it a Halloween party? Yes. Or is it the fall harvest party? Because, you know, <laughs> Methodist Church. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> so so those, those, things, those things are coming. So what are we going to do today? Well, uh, taking, so I sketched out of Paul's talk from last week, and we're going to look at it in a minute. But Paul shared with us it was super important to uh, really maximize how you use the first five minutes of your class. And so to that, we're going to follow his argot. And again, Look how unprofessional this looks. But it says Arguat, which is what Paul said. So I can tell those are letters. So your attention, please. And we did that with um, with Sir Ken. And so this is my person talking. And we're going to just talk about doodles from the students, from you, uh, from however learning is occurring, right? And why note-taking is important. And why is note-taking important? Because our, we want our students to reference back the things that we were talking about. Right? Because if they can reference those things, then it's going to help them with their memory and their recall. And some students are, have like fo have these photographic memories. I was not blessed with one of those. But, but um, I did go back and refer to notes a lot as I prepared or researched or studied or learned or did a thing. And so note taking, it is a really uh, important skill. So, um, and then notice here for review, I didn't, we didn't really have anything to base our review on today, but look, I drew an old-fashioned tape deck looking thing. Do you guys remember tape decks? Some of you probably have no idea what a tape deck is, <laughs> looking at Patricia. But um, most people in here uh, should, should remember that. The goals for, the, for today are why, why sketchnoting, why it's important, why we should consider it, um, how to do that, and then some of the benefits from it. So everything is going to center around around these things. <laughs> and, and why? Well, the, the brain is a pretty impressive muscle, right? Like it does a whole bunch of stuff, like fancy pants stuff. Like we're all here right now because our brains manufactured all the weird witchcrafty things to make us get here, right? And eat Chick-fil-A and, and color and draw. And so what's so important about Sketchnote? It, it combines two parts of learning into one thing. It combines a visual, a picture, an idea, with a verbal, a word, a communication. And because of that, it allows your brain to make more connections. You can find the bigger ideas, and you can make meaning. So I could stand here in front of you and talk about 18th century French politics, and some of you could care less. That would make no meaning for you at all. But if you were to sketchnote it, you would start finding the meaning in there, and you would organize it in a way that best speaks to you. And that's important, because what it comes down to is we want our students learning, and so we need them to make meaning. As the, Remember, as the teacher, you can correct them as we go. So if they start going a little bit far afield, you just, you just bring them back. 
Our agenda today, we're going to talk about, um, we've got the Ken Robinson, we've got upcoming single events, what our goals are, why sketchnoting, how sketchnoting. You're going to have a lot, in, and in between all this, we're going to take time to draw. So have your pens at the ready, and then we'll just kind of go over what we learned today. So this is a rough, rough idea, and I'm probably already off my timer. No, I'm rough. Yeah, I am. Darn it. So, so there you go. But never fear, you can do it. So here's what I did. I thought uh, I, I told Paul I'd do this uh, sketch note on uh, work sketch noting workshop. So I sketch noted my plan to do a sketch noting workshop. I thought, what better way to do it than to just dive in? Why, why do I show you this? I show you this as an example of what you can do because through the process of doodling through and sketch noting out what I wanted to do with you guys, I organized my thoughts really well. And I was able to remember to do things that I wanted to do and to share things that I wanted to share and talk about things that I wanted to talk about. And you can see how it flows. So I, I started off with research. What does research say is about sketchnoting? And I put all that research, and there's not a ton of it yet because sketchnoting is sort of new, but visual note taking, sketchnoting, um, there was one other phrase which escapes me right now, it was referred to. Um, so I gave you some I gave you some research in there and and then we, we bought a couple books that will go into our professional library over here by a guy named Mike Rode so I read through these and taking some of the things that he shared and some of the research that I found I was able to put together uh, a guy that's the best looking guy I've drawn in my life <laughs> okay and he's not even a stick figure he's, he's a little bit more robust than that so I'm I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty pleased. And so then I thought, okay, well, learning. I need to learn how to do a sketch note because I've, I've never really done this. I've been fascinated by it. And probably if my wife would have let me stay in graduate school for another two or three or four years, my dissertation would have been on sketch noting because I think there's some positive benefits here. So I got a book and I just started to draw things out. And then I practice. And so you can see my practice right here: dividers, bullets. More bullets, practical ideas came from Mike Road. I drew some people, drew some folks, and they look like people and folks. I worked on different fonts. I'm pretty proud of this one. It's a fun looking hello. I also did this font right here. Check it out. Yeah. So I guess what I'm saying is if I can do it, you can do it too. And then I just and then I just I started putting it together. How do I want it to look when I came when I get to you guys? So this was my original idea. And I think when we get done with this, we'll see that my original idea turned into sort of how today's gonna look. But again, it was an idea that I needed. And then I've listed off the articles and books. And again, to show that there are words and images that go with everything. They both combine together. So one of the suggestions that um, was was shared for sketch noting was to not be overwhelmed with stuff. Like, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this? So one of the one of the strongest suggestions, and it, and it actually came through this through um, Mike Road. He's like, all you need to do is master these five shapes: square, circle, line, triangle, dot. Just master those five shapes. Everything is based on those five shapes. So, take a few minutes and practice just drawing out some squares, circles, lines, triangles, and dots in such a way that they sort of make a fun looking thing. There's another thing that you can do too, because sometimes we want to show faces with emotion. And I don't know about you, but I cannot draw, like if I try to draw my own face, forget it. Like it'll be some sort of disaster that doesn't look like me at all. And people will be like, ha -ha, the hunchback has a twin. Um, but, and we're going to, I'll show you this at the end, but there's, there's a really easy way to do it just using some of these basic things. So again, just a little, a little curve, a couple of dots, triangle nose, and a curve for a mouth. Or you could do straight line, couple of dots, triangle, half circle. Or you could triangle, couple of dots, triangle, straight line. And, and so 
these are some simple, just some simple facial things that you can draw. And don't get frustrated about about how how your drawing looks. It, the The point is to communicate to you a face. It doesn't matter if the face is that lady in the in the museum. That one, what's her name? No. Uh, no uh, what's that one? Then, yeah, it doesn't matter if it's the Mona Lisa face. Or which was Mona? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or just yeah. Um, Mo, you know, I can I can make Mona Lisa. Let's see. Uh huh. And is she smiling? I'm not sure. So, um. I see the reason. Yeah, see? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and I can make her bigger than the real one. So, <laughs> but, um, the, the thing is that it needs to just, it just needs to be recognizable to you because you're the one learning from it. You're the one planning the thing or organizing or, or trying to create your ideas. So, all right. So that's a little bit about getting started. So while we're working today, just feel free to use these five shapes and do. So why should we sketch note? I'm officially 12 minutes behind. <laughs> all right, so why sketch noting? Well, for one, whether it's you doing this or your students, you can organize in a way that makes sense to you. So, and you'll notice that some of my stuff today is very, uh, appears to be very unorganized, and some of it flows in a very specific direction. And that's up for you to decide how to do that. Like the sketch note we saw at the beginning, he, he's sort of centered and then was spinning around the edge of it. Okay? But you can organize yourself. You can, you can like, uh, like you, you read a magazine, down the column, over into the top of the next column, straight down, over to the top of the next column, straight down, like a skyscraper. Look. You can organize as a step one, step two, step three. Look. You can organize it as we're just going to move from the left to the right side across the page. Look. But the thing is, you get to organize it so that it makes meaning for you. And that's how it needs to be. And if you're talking with your students about this, then you would tell them the same thing. This needs to make meaning to you. And let me ask you this. Which is harder to draw? Or take notes on? Um, just think about this for a second. I'm gazing outside of my office at the magnificent tree. The bark is a very vibrant color of brown, and it's very looks very rough in particular. And it's all it's got these amazing grooves. And that bark goes up this tree trunk that's I don't know maybe 18 inches in in a in diameter, and it goes up into this beautiful tree. And the tree is about 65 feet tall, and the and the leaves are amazing and green. Each leaf is is very unique, but it's got like six pointy edges on each. So there's that. Or there's like tree. So think about your students. Like when you're when you're describing these things to your students and you're walking these things to your students, can they represent that idea or that thing as a picture? And is that picture going to be easier to draw than all of the words that describe the tree? And maybe they can draw a tree and, and with an arrow. Hey, six pointed leaves. Or you know, or whatever. But it allows them to make their own meaning. Uh, it also goes indiv individually. So it works out for each person in their own unique way because they're going to organize it how they want to organize it in their own unique way. It's visual and verbal. It can make really complex statements much more uh, simple and easy to understand. Once you start doing this, I started finding, con and, and I can say I wrote down fine connections. I, I started finding these things like doing Paul's talk, trying to do Paul's talk in real life. Uh, I was able to find some connections. And then Lisa and I went to the law school last week. And so I sketched, so Lisa was teaching on some stuff. So I sketched note of Lisa's like, oh my gosh, look at all these. Wow, I never saw this coming until I had a sketch note of it. And so trying to put that together, you're able to see some of these different things that are happening. Um, it's also more engaging because students really are activating a bunch of different neurons at once because not only are they putting down those, those verbal things, they are putting down those visual things. And so there's a whole lot of stuff happening inside the brain, and it allows them to um, 
to really engage in your material in a way that's very different and unique. And you don't have to be an artist. I, I am not one. And I boldly make that claim. And I'm not convinced you could train me good enough to do that. Just like I don't think Paul could train me good enough to sing well. But I can I can do circle, I can do circle, line, rectangle, line, colored in shoe thing. I can do a circle with some lines and some more circles and some lines and some squiggles. I can do that. I think I'm a good squiggler. I can doodle a big idea font. I'm sure some of you can doodle it even better. And if you want to see some really great uh, sketch notes that are based on education, Sylvia Duckworth. You may have heard the Duckworth name before. So I, I, I don't know if they're siblings or not. <laughs> but we could start a rumor, you know? Um, so what Sylvia Duckworth has said is she, she said that um, the images are more effective than words when looking at comprehension, retention, and motivation. So I thought that was really interesting. So I just drew an image of a portrait of two people. They took their picture together. Aren't they cute? Look at that. Does it look like a Christmas tree to you that they're standing by? It does. See? But I'm not an artist. Me neither. <laughs> Me neither. I'm not either. But you can tell that that's Christmas tree-ish. And that's the point, right? Okay, so here's what I want you to do. I want you, and feel free to talk with it. Oh, feel free to talk with a neighbor. <laughs> Using all of your tools, square, straight line, circle, triangle. I want you to, where my mouse go? I want you to sketch out on your pad uh, some ideas. We're not going to take 25 minutes. Sketch out some ideas for a treehouse for birds. What treehouse for birds? Like yeah. yeah, like a birdhouse. <laughs> <laughs> a treehouse birdhouse. A tree is a bird. A tree is a bird. <laughs> <laughs> or, even, or maybe even a real bear, uh, tree house. But birdhouse, tree house, house house. People tree birdhouse. So let's just take a few, let's take a few minutes to like sketch out some ideas. Uh, talk amongst yourselves if you need to. Uh, feel free to lean over and look at your neighbor and and offer some assistance. So. So here's the deal. As you practice and improve your sketch noting techniques, um, your listening and drawing will feel more natural. You'll be able to step into it a little easier. Um, and so when when this guy and and this comes these this slides these slides come from Mike Brody. He's he tries to really engage in a way he's listening to and turning it into a sketch note. So he's listening, he's analyzing, he's mapping. And so when he when he's doing on all of these, he gets he gets his sketch note. And so, let me just ask you this. Who in here today has a smartphone with them? Who has a smartphone? Okay. Who had a smartphone when they were five years old? Patricia doesn't count. Ah. <laughs> right? Oh, nobody. So, everybody in here had to learn how to smartphone, right? So, everybody in here had to learn how to send a text message, right? So, now, if I say send a text message, you could look at your phone and send probably a five-paragraph text message in less than two seconds because you're going to put emojis in there and you're going to cut down, you're going to take out all the vowels so it's just, um, it's just constants, right? And then you're going to send your message and somebody's going to be able to read and interpret that and know exactly what you're saying. So same thing goes here. Like you had to learn how to text message. So you can learn how to do a sketch note. And again, it just it just needs to matter to you. Okay, so it's also it's also not art. And this is what I was talking about at the beginning, like bad drawing, good drawing. That's a dog. Just like my tree's a tree, <laughs> right? It doesn't matter what it looks like. If you want to make an amazing dog because you're gifted and you can do that, make an amazing dog. But you don't need to because the image is, conveys the same meaning. This is a dog. So... 
Uh, they're just ways to think on paper. Um, and then go through and think about all the things that you've looked at art-wise. Just start, as, as we're doing these like little sketches and little doodles, like if you go back and look at your other doodles, go and look. I bet they're made up of these five things. And lastly, um, listen. Try and make sure that you're a good uh, participant in, in what you're listening to and what you're sketching. Just like we want our students to do that, right? Like if we look at some student and they're staring, staring out the window at the squirrels running around, we know they're not listening. So as a teacher, we want to pull them back in, right? Or, or whatever you're doing. If you're working with people, or even if you notice yourself looking outside, uh, when you should, you know, like, sure, I'm hungry. Now, now I'm distracted and I don't want to teach anymore. <laughs> you know, so uh, it's like when you have five million things to do and all of a sudden we're going to organize the bookshelf because why not? So, so be focused on what you're doing. So how can you do this? How can you do this? And have you noticed that my layout has changed a little bit? <clears throat> so if we come all the way back here, here's my first one. Sort of went to the top of the page down. Here's my next one, which, which sort of went kind of around in a weird circle. Here's my next one, which is like this side, this side, this stuff. And then this guy now in a big circle, organized by circle. So how can you do it? One, organize your page in a way that makes sense for you. Some people love swirlies. Their sketch notes going to do all this crazy business right here. I don't know what just happened. Paul's Apple TV broke. Get out. Okay. Some people are like, this is the main idea. These are all the things that go around it. Some people are like, starting at the top of the page, we're going straight to the bottom with everything. Some people are like, column one, step one, column two, step two, column three, step three. Some people are a little bit more organized, like sort of the old-fashioned calendar, like here's the big block of stuff, and this is the supporting things underneath. Some people are like popcorn. Ooh, here's an idea. Ooh, that led to these five good ideas. Oh, that led to these three good ideas. Oh, that led to these two good ideas. And so you run down that popcorn rabbit hole. So organize your page. And if you know you're going to a class or you're going to come to a workshop or something like that, prepare a little bit ahead of time. Like organize your page ahead of time. So when I was thinking about how to teach this page, that's what I did. I organized this page ahead of time because I figured when you, when we need to learn to sketch note, where there are probably some steps we want to try and see, right? Then master these basic shapes and master drawing people. And, and so it's just a rectangle with two squiggly lines and some feet. That's just a, like a sort of sad droopy star <laughs> and they have fancy names for how to draw these people I don't know what they are and some people can make can draw these people can draw these star guys and make them look like they're dancing I can barely get one to just not look like a marshmallow <laughs> but I'm getting sort of good at these guys these guys I can draw I can draw these guys kind of good and I notice I put little distractor little uh, identifiers here and then here's the faces that we talked about and then make your own fonts. Have fun here. And again, with the fonts, it's just like how you write in real life. Okay? And when we, like, when I wrote this one, pretty proud of that, by the way. But it took me a minute. Because I don't normally write like that. But if I practice writing like that, it will get easier for me to do. Uh, I write a lot of this. And I write a lot of this. Like, this is more natural for me. But I can make these blocky, fancy things. I can make them big. I can do a cursive. That's pretty good cursive. But again, it just comes with practice. So you don't want to get where you're writing super mm -hmm. slow because you're really making a perfect block. But you don't want to get where you're writing super fast either and it's just a bunch of scratch on the paper. And then work on all these like dividers and containers and other visual elements. You know, have some arrows and some bullet points and some separators and some containers. Put all those things together. Make it stand out. Give us pop. Jeez, we're almost out of time. Jeez, where does the time go? So here's the one that I did 
in real life with Dr. Gutt. The only thing that I did ahead of time was I, I knew the, because I knew it was, I already knew what Paul was doing. So I organized in a way that let me show the steps that Paul was going to take us through. So I didn't know how many spaces I was going to need because I didn't know how many rabbit holes we were going to run down or how many ideas Paul was going to share. So I gave myself plenty of spaces and I, I said, hey, here's Dr. Geb. I drew a quick little bow tie guy. I said, setting students up for success the first five minutes. That was what I put down. And then I put a little flag here that said the main points and that was all I did to prepare. So I divided my page up, gave it the title, who was speaking, for the five points. It, uh, the main points, and then, and then as as Paul was talking, he's like, "Here's our goals for today." Oh, goals for today. Those are the main points. Boom, here they are. And because I had already clued my, I'd already um, primed myself to identify those goals, then I was ready for them when he revealed them to us, which happened to work out really good because that's what he was talking about doing <laughs> with your students. So, so then, then I I started tying in. The, those goals, the things that Paul was talking about with those goals as we were talking about his workshop. Look at that pirate guy. Can you tell it's a pirate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, after I drew it and I could tell it was a pirate, I, I was pretty shocked. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so this is what sketchnoting can look like. All right, so we've got a few minutes left. Um, and so what I'd like for you to do is... is it's okay to talk with your neighbor, get ideas from your neighbor here, but uh, using the, the, the dot, circle, triangle, square, line, uh, make a house or a clock or some people or dogs or bullets or dividers or arrows or anything, right? And here's the creative face matrix. All you have to add into that matrix is, uh, is a little triangle nose and two dots for eyes. Probably somebody's going to need to win that's the TV now, sorry. Um, so, with the time we have left, a few more minutes, feel free to draw some of these things. And I missed the year turn by only, what time are we supposed to be done? One? One fifteen. Oh, yes, 15 minutes, just like I planned. <laughs> As you're doodling, just be thinking um, how you can encourage your students to make some meaning in your courses with some sort of doodle or thing. Um, share with them just a couple of ideas. It doesn't need to be, you know, I know when, sometimes when you come to a workshop like this, you're like, oh my God, there's something else I have to do. Where I don't have, like, seriously, whew, I'm already three weeks behind. School started two weeks ago. Like, dang, Scott. But but just think about um, just incorporating this as, as, we're not adding two, but take something out so that you're able to work on this as well. Um, which sounds really weird, but uh, in my normal course of putting together workshops, I have you know like a certain way that I do, and this time I just decided that um, it's, instead of make a big long list and like checking like Paul's a list maker, you know, and, and he's a list checker offer person, so I thought instead of doing something like that, I'm gonna I'm gonna try this instead, and and it worked out it worked out okay uh, in the long run, and it will probably be something that I do again. But um, so think about those those kinds of things and just share with your students. Look, like make a make a picture. Does a does a picture work for this? Will a picture with a short word phrase work for this? Um, and we'll have these books uh, available to you. The field note guides are for you guys uh, to keep in the pen because they're fun to write with. Um, we got them just for you for today. Um, but take a take a peek at these also. They'll be in our, they're in my office right now, but we'll get them processed into the library circulation system pretty quick. Uh, and these are really super, super, super helpful. Um, also, I put into our D2L shell. Let me show you that too. So in our D2L shell, I have for you uh, the whole the whole video for Ken Robinson. So if you like, I'm a if Ken Robinson were to walk in here right now, I'd probably just faint dead away. Uh, and then he would never forget me because it would be really embarrassing. But I put his whole talk right here. Uh, I put the sketches that I that I drew in here for you to see as well. And then if you'll scroll under all these sketches, there's actually some uh, workbook sheets that came with one of the books. And I downloaded them and put them in here for you guys. So you can just click on this. These are PDFs. You can print it off and you can doodle in them. Um, and maybe you just need to doodle to think. 
you know, so we all need to think on what we're doing sometimes, right? Like we all do that anyway. Like we're constantly thinking on our practice. And so maybe just doodle while you're thinking and see what comes out of that. So those, and they're, they're all different things that are in there. Uh, I included the um, information on, on these books. So if this is something that you think you're really interested in, the books, I don't think the books are that expensive. They weren't that bad uh, as far as books go. So that might be something you want to consider. And then I linked in a PDF of some of the different um, research that I've found. So I used Google Scholar to find these things. So I know Google Scholar sometimes is loose about what's researchy, but sometimes it isn't. So so those those came from there. And then I would love it if you do a sketch note uh, with either you or your students, please take a picture of it and post it in our discussion uh, board for that. I would love I would love to see it. Like, we can all learn and perhaps giggle about vampire cat dog. <laughs> thing. Um, and then lastly, when you have just a few uh, minutes of your free time, another TED Talk from Sonny Brown called Doodlers Unite. It's only about five minutes long. Uh, and it'll, you know, TED Talks for the most part are entertaining. You might not like this one, but you know, TED's entertaining stuff. And the most important thing at the bottom down here is a survey. Uh, and since you're here, you take the first one because you're not watching this on video. So please participate in our survey uh, so that we can track your, we need to track something. If you fill out the survey, you will receive a certificate of attendance. Oh, yeah, that's super important, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. For your promotion uh, and yes, tenure. Yes, for promotion and tenure. Um, and I believe if you'll post something in the discussion board, sketch note wise, there's a Another. So we're going to try a new level two version of this, which is application. Have you actually taken something from a workshop and added it to the class? How is it benefiting the, the classroom that we have today? So if we track this over time, we can see all the myriad of ideas that you do naturally every day. But why not, why not let us collect this huge portfolio of the things that are making a difference on OCU. And so what we will do is we'll, we'll do a level two, which those who participate over a certain period of time, we're going to publicly, publicly acknowledge this. And we want to show those people who think, oh, I don't know if fetal is important or not. We can say it is important. These are the things that happen in our classroom, and these are the outcomes that happen. So uh, we want to be able to share that. We want to be able to brag on this. So we went to a workshop on doodling. That's right, doodling. And it was amazing. The best one of the year. Uh, so with that, I know time is precious to you and probably duties are calling. So thank you for coming. Make sure that you've signed in. Make sure you do our survey. Are there any other seedily announcement -y no, things? You'll probably start uh, a video of this will be available by Thursday. And then uh, we will also, if you will start receiving emails on Thursday to fill out the survey. So as soon as you do that, the emails will stop. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for coming. I appreciate it. Have a super great afternoon.